So if we need to graph a problem like this, let's go and think about, well, first thing we should always do is simplify, right? Can't really do anything with the number on top. So let's see what we can do in the denominator. Quadratics can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. Now, I don't want to do x times x, right? Because that's going to give me x squared. I do want to do an x squared times an x squared. And then I've got to think about what two numbers multiply give me 9 and add to give me a negative 10. Well, since they have to add to give me a negative, I know they both have to be a negative since they're multiplying to give me a positive. So therefore, it's negative 9 and negative 1. So negative 9 and negative 1. And then I'm like, holy crap, that's a difference of two squares. Um, this can be broken down into an x minus 3 times x plus 3. This can be down into negative 1 times x plus 1. Whew, you know what, let's just rewrite this whole problem because that's a lot to take in. Okay, so I can see why simplifying would be so helpful because now let's go ahead and identify the parts that we're gonna to want to identify for this graph, right? We wanna find the asymptotes, we wanna find holes, we wanna find the x and y intercepts. So let's go and do this step by step to be able to kind of figure this one out. Um, because there's a lot that's going on in this denominator. The first thing I always like to do is, you know, look, we already simplified it, right? So let's go and find our vertical asymptotes. And vertical asymptotes is pretty easy. You just take your denominator and set it equal to zero. So I use the feature of speeding through this because a lot of students want to get lazy and they want to go ahead and not rewrite it, not set them equal to zero and not actually find the values. I get it, ladies and gentlemen. And me as a teacher, I wanted to show you, for those of you that were kind of understanding like where you get these values, this is why I got the values that I did, which are gonna represent my vertical asymptotes. Okay, now we have a lot of vertical asymptotes, but I don't know what the graph looks like, right? Is it S-curves? Is it parabolas? Like, what is going on here? So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is, well, let's find the horizontal asymptote. Now, again, notice here that the degree in my numerator, which is technically an x to the zero, is smaller than my denominator. So therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So these are my vertical asymptotes. My horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero. Okay, the next thing is let's go and find my x and my y intercepts. So remember the x-intercept is going to be when y is equal to a zero, right? When is y is equal to zero, which is going to be, in this case, my function f of x. Therefore, now I can just go ahead and set that in there. So y is equal to zero. So basically you're setting your numerator into your denominator, or zero is equal to one. Well, that doesn't make any sense, right? So there's no x-intercepts, okay? So the graph is never gonna cross the x-intercept. That's kind of important. Now, what about the y-intercept? I'm kind of running out of space here. The y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. Well, if you plug zero in for all of these values, let's go and see. I don't really wanna plug it in here. Let's do it up here. Zero squared, so times negative 10. So therefore that's just gonna be a one ninth. So that's gonna be this point right here, okay. So now we have the y-intercept, there is no x-intercept, we have the horizontal asymptote, and we have four vertical asymptotes. So now we gotta be able to figure out well, what's going on with this graph, right? Now the important thing is, we know that the graph is eventually going to be approaching my asymptotes, and we know that the graph is also going to be approaching my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So what we're gonna wanna do is pick some points to be able to plot. Now which points should we plot? Well, we already kind of have zero here in this case. What I would recommend doing is, we know it can't cross the x-intercept, so, I'm assuming then this graph is gonna look something like this, right? It has to approach these asymptotes. Now, what about for negative one, negative two? What about f of negative two? What about f of two? What about f of four? And what about f of negative four, right? Because I wanna know what's going on there and what's going on there um, to be able to identify where this graph is going. Because remember, it also has to approach this horizontal asymptote eventually. Since we already know one is gonna be the numerator, I'm gonna to try to do as much mental math as I possibly can, okay? So we have a negative two to the fourth power, that is going to be 16, and then we have x squared. And really, I'm just looking for a general value, guys. Really, if it's positive or if it's gonna be negative, I'm not actually gonna to be too concerned what that value is. But anyways, I'll just try to do my best. So we have 16, so let's just do a little math here. So f of negative two, so that's gonna be 16, minus a 10 times four, plus nine. Okay, so therefore that's gonna be a negative number, right? Yeah, so negative 15, and remember that's a one over negative 15. So that's a really, really small number, right? But it's negative, that's important here. So it's gonna be like somewhere here. Now again, remember guys, it has to approach these asymptotes, right? So it's gonna look like this. All right, so now let's go and check out f of two. And if you recognize for f of two, that's gonna be the exact same value as negative one over 15, right? Because it doesn't matter if you take a negative two or a positive two and you're squaring it, you're gonna get the exact same value. So therefore in this case, that's gonna be a negative one over 15. So therefore this graph, gonna look something like this. All right, so now we need to do f of four, so we're gonna plug it in. So four to the fourth power is going to be a 256 minus a um, four squared would be 16, so that'd be negative 10 times 16 
plus nine, so therefore that's going to be a 160, um, and then plus nine, so that's going to give you a 105. But remember, guys, that's over one, right? So this is going to be one over 105. Now, it's a very, very small number, but it's positive. So therefore, now it's not a parabola, though, because there's no other vertical asymptote for it to approach. So it has to approach this horizontal asymptote, right? And this graph is going to look exactly the same here. I know it kind of ran on space here, but that's going to look like this. So you have like these little hyperbola parts here and parabola, parabola, parabola. So hopefully this video was helpful for you and gave you some value. If you want more examples of rational expressions, then check out the playlist I have for you down below or go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here.